war in Ukraine, rising energy prices and record inflation. The economic outlook for the continent is more than gloomy as the cost of living for European citizens skyrockets. But how is the EU looking to address these challenges? This is something I will be discussing with my guest, the European Commissioner for Economy, Paolo Gentiloni. So, Commissioner, the European Commission has just revised its economic estimates. It seems that for Europe, the worst is yet to come. Uh, well, indeed, we are already in, uh, so to say, in troubled waters. Of course, the, the 24th of February uh, was a, a change, a game changer, not only for geopolitics, for peace, for the victims, for the suffering uh, in Ukraine, but it was a game changer also for our economy. Um, now, I think we are still um, experiencing a very moderate level of growth. Uh, so I will not participate to a, a sort of uh, a prophecy of, uh, of catastrophe. Um, what we uh, estimate today is that we will have um, growth at 2.7 this year. Mm -hmm. And then this will uh, decline to 1.5 next year. What are the basic scenarios uh, you are working on? Well, we are working on a scenario where uh, inflation is probably peaking in these weeks. Mm -hmm. um, we estimate uh, inflation reaching a peak in the third quarter of this year. And then uh, slowly going down in the last quarter of this year. Uh, the annual figure is 7.6% for this year and 4% for next year. Of course, this is the baseline scenario, and the baseline scenario is based on the assumption that the energy um, supply uh, will uh, remain more or less as it is. Of course, if we will have a total uh, cut of gas supply from Russia, we will have enter in a more uh, adverse reality. What are you doing to mitigate these scenarios and especially the worst ones? As always, we have to prepare to the worst. What um, is now um, very important, um, I think, are three things. Uh, first, um, prepare the winter with storage. We have now a good level of storage, higher than 60% and higher than it was in 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, second, diversify, mm -hmm. meaning that the reduction of the role of uh, Russian oil and gas, of course, need to be um, substituted by other um, sources. And third point, we have to uh, caution the impact of these energy uh, prices and high inflation, especially for more vulnerable households. I would add the fourth point, but I know how difficult it is, which is uh, the common effort in uh, procurement of um, uh, alternative supply. I'm sure that acting as a one, the European Union would be stronger with uh, interlocutors in the gas and energy markets. Uh, but I also am well aware of the fact that uh, different uh, countries, different companies have long-term contracts. It is not easy. The Commission will present soon its uh, contingency plans uh, for the energy crisis, but uh, the proposals for electricity bills uh, will be in autumn. Won't it be too late? We will... Uh, continue to face high prices and uh, what we ask to member states is to have this reaction uh, as far as possible uh, temporary and targeted, mm -hmm. meaning that uh, you have to target it to households that have um, more difficulties in uh, paying their uh, gasoline or heating or electricity bills mm -hmm. and this is the lower income families mm -hmm. uh, and at the same time we ask for temporary measures because if we 
introduce permanent measures to support fuel uh, and uh, traditional energy sources. Um, not only we introduce a burden for public finance, but we risk to undermine our own climate transition. Europe is paying a heavy price because of the sanctions against Russia. Commissioner, were the sanctions well evaluated before being implemented? Well, I think that Europe is not paying a high price for the sanctions. Uh, Europe is paying high price for the Russian invasion. Um, how do you respond to the Russian invasion? Well, you can respond militarily. It would have been a m mad decision, uh, creating a risk of war escalation. Or you can respond economically. And the economic response was impressively united. And, of course, this is creating uh, huge difficulties for the Russian economy. Uh, and I think that, overall, it is helping uh, Ukraine to resist. Mm -hmm. And the Ukrainian resistance is in our common interest. A few days ago, the euro fell to parity with the dollar after 20 years. Are you concerned? And what should we do to strengthen the euro? I, I don't see this uh, euro versus dollar situation as a demonstration of weakness of the euro. Uh, it is, in, in fact, a demonstration of strengthening of the dollar. Mm -hmm. If we look to the relation between the euro and the British pound or the euro and the Japanese yen, uh, you see that the euro is stronger than before. Uh, against these currencies. Um, why is the dollar strengthening? It is uh, an inevitable trend in uh, cases of um, a downturn of the economy. Uh, at the same time, um, I think that this uh, could be a big problem, especially for uh, emerging and low-income countries in the world, because mm -hmm. they, if they adapt... Um, their access to market become more and more difficult. I see a difficulty uh, not so much for the European Union, but for emerging markets and low-income countries. Commissioner, thank you very much for thank being you. with us. Thank you.